So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So it's based on this fantasy book series, right? Which has sold a lot of copies. Oh, okay, sorry, I got bored by the word book there for a second, but I'm listening now, so what's this series about? Well, it's called Harry Potter, sir, and it's about this kid called Harry Potter. I understand completely. And so this evil wizard Voldemort tried to kill Harry and his parents when he was a baby, right? But not only did Harry survive, it seems like he killed Voldemort. Oh, uh, retaliatory babies are tight. Actually, he was like, Protected by the power of his dying mother's love. Oh, his mother's love is tight. Oh, I don't know about that sentence. I don't love how it sounded either, but I said it and there's no taking it back. So anyway, we're gonna meet this wizard Dumbledore, right? And he wants to leave baby Harry with his non-magical family, but he doesn't want to be seen doing magic in the suburbs. So what does he do? He does some magic in the suburbs. He turns all the streetlights into flying magic balls and zips them down the street at him. Ah, you know, I think walking down the street normally might have drawn less attention than the magic flying light balls. Maybe. So Dumbledore's gonna explain to these other wizards, Hagrid and Professor McGonagall, that Harry's gonna be famous in the wizarding world, so it's better for him to grow up away from all that. I guess that's better. So he's like, let's just leave Harry in an abusive family for a decade and then kind of spring all this on him when he's a 10-year-old. And that's better than growing up rich and famous. That's what Dumbledore's going with. So then Harry's about to turn 11 and he starts receiving letters from this magic school called Hogwarts where Dumbledore is the headmaster. Okay, but his family, they don't like him. They don't want him to read these letters. Why not? Because they hate him so much they want to... I keep him around. I don't know. That works. So the uncle keeps destroying these letters and they keep showing up, but Harry just can't get his hands on one long enough to read it. Wow, well, it's too bad they don't have a magical letter that just kind of shouts the message at you. Uh, well, no, actually, they do have that. Those are called howlers. Oh, sounds like maybe they just could have sent him one of those. Well, we don't introduce them till a future movie, so that's as good as them not existing right now. That makes sense. So anyway, then that Hagrid guy shows up and tells Harry that he's a wizard and takes him away from his family. Very exciting. So Hagrid brings him to get all the stuff he needs for school. Like he gets an owl named Hedwig. Oh, Hedwig. Yeah, he's super cute. Don't get too attached. What? Oh, and also Harry has to get a wand, right? So he goes to this place called Ollivander's and just destroys the place. Does he get in trouble? No, that just kind of seems like this guy's way of doing things. Just let children destroy his stuff until they find a wand that works. Interesting business model. So anyway, eventually Harry gets on the train to Hogwarts and he meets this kid, Ron Weasley, and he's got a rat on his crotch. Oh. Oh my god. Oh yeah, no, it sounds gross, but in a later movie we're gonna find out that the rat is actually a middle-aged man disguised as a rat. Oh, that's so much worse. Oh yeah, I guess that is worse. Anyway, turns out Ron's poor, so Harry buys all the candy on the cart for just the two of them. Okay, kind of a jerk move, actually. What if the other kids on the train wanted some candy? Well, that's too bad, because Harry's rich and rich people get what they want. That is true, yeah. And then they also meet this know-it-all Hermione, and they get to Hogwarts together. Oh boy, and what happened? there. Well, this Draco Malfoy kid wants to be Harry's friend, but he's super mean to Ron, so Harry's like, uh -huh, no thank you. Oh, okay, that's a nice move. Yeah, so he chooses to be friends with Ron instead, who's so mean to Hermione that she cries in a bathroom. Oh my god. So then all the new students get sorted into these four houses, one of which is just for the evil kids. Why would they have that? And then the school year begins. Wow, so what kind of stuff are they gonna do? Oh, just all kinds of life-threatening things. Oh, very dangerous. They also celebrate celebrate Christmas. Wizards celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah, even though a lot of his miracles are things they learn as 11 year olds, turns out the wizarding world developed the same religious practices as non-magical people. Huh. So anyway, throughout the movie, they start suspecting that this evil looking Professor Snape is after this magical stone. Oh, is it magical? Well, this freaking thing can make you immortal. And they see Snape doing kind of sketchy things, so they think he wants to bring Voldemort back to life. But kind of sketchy stuff. Like at a certain point, it seems like he's trying to make Harry fall off his flying broomstick, so Hermione sets him on fire. Holy, she just straight up murders a guy? I no, just like his robe, it's okay. Oh, okay. But at the end of the movie, we're gonna find out it was actually this Professor Quirrell guy who was trying to jinx the broom and the fire made him lose his eye contact. Why didn't he just restart the jinxing after the fire was out? I don't know. Fair enough. So eventually they find out that the stone is actually in Hogwarts and a bunch of professors put spells to try to keep it safe. Okay. And so Harry and Ron and Hermione, they decide they need to stop Snape from getting 
getting it. So what are some of these challenges? Well, the first one is a giant three-headed dog that you need to get past to get into this little trap door in this little room. They kept a dog locked in a room for a full year? That's, that's kind of messed up. No, it's not. Oh, okay. And then there are going to be a couple more, like a giant chess game where you have to sit on the pieces and you get attacked. Oh. Yeah, and so Ron falls from like three feet in the air and then he's, you know, just kind of a big drama queen about it. Very dramatic. So now Hermione has to help Ron and Harry carries on by himself. And how does that go? Well, he ends up finding Professor Quirrell standing in front of this mirror trying to figure out how to get the stone out of it. Oh, okay. And then he reveals that he's actually had the Dark Lord Voldemort's face under his turban this whole time. Oh. Must have been very awkward for him to poop all year. Yeah, no, can't imagine those were pleasant for either of them. You think he ever went to scratch his head and accidentally poked the Dark Lord in the eye? You know, maybe. Do you think they said goodnight to each other before bed every night, or was it just awkward silence? I don't know. Maybe let's not think about this too much. Oh, okay. Anyway, so then the stone magically appears in Harry's pocket because of the magic mirror. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. So now Professor Quirrell comes after him. Oh man, it's gonna be tough for him to defend himself against a full-grown man in the tiny face of a dead man. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, it turns out his mom's love is like super plot armor, so he turns Professor Quirrell to dust just by touching him. Oh my god, he kills a teacher? He does, yeah, and so that's a happy turn of events. This child took this man's life very easily. Jeez. So then Dumbledore explains to Harry that this mirror had a spell on it where the stone would only transfer to somebody who wanted to find the stone but not use it. So that's why Professor Quirrell couldn't get it. Exactly. Wow. So all the other challenges were kind of unnecessary, huh? Ah. Uh. Yeah, kinda. And you know, arguably, Harry made the situation much more dangerous by showing up. The stone would have stayed in the mirror, it never would have been within Voldemort's grasp. Yeah, okay, well we're gonna play the moment as heroic, okay? Yeah, I guess. So anyway, then it's the end of the year, and there's this thing called the House Cup, where like, throughout the year, each house gets points and loses points based on the stuff they do. Okay. And the good guy house, Gryffindor, is dead last, and the bad guy house, Slytherin, they win. Oh, well. You know, bummer. Yeah, but then Dumbledore, he's like, hey, everybody, shut the hell up, because Harry Potter here killed one of the teachers with his bare hands. Yeah. So he gives Harry and all his friends a bunch of points for killing that man, you know, ending that guy's life, being the last face he ever saw. This... I imagine this is phrased better in the book. Yeah, I think, probably. All right. Oh, and also Dumbledore spoke with this guy, Nicholas Flamel, who was being kept alive by the stone, and he agreed to just die and let the stone be destroyed. Oh. Yeah, the guy's been alive for like 600 years, so he's like, yeah, okay, destroy the stone. I've lived long enough. Probably should have had that talk in the first place before storing the stone at Hogwarts and endangering all the students. Maybe. So then Harry gets on the train to go home and waves like a normal person. What are you talking about? The way he waves? It's perfectly normal. Okay, I mean, yeah, all right. So then that's it. What do you think? Well, you know, it sounds like a pretty good time. What's this first movie called anyway? Like, what's the full title? Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Oh, okay. And also Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, because that first one I said is kind of hard. Wait, what? Hi everybody, Ryan here. Hope you enjoyed that pitch meeting. Now some of you might be saying, hey, you already friggin' did a Harry Potter pitch meeting, you jerk. And that is true. Back in 2018, I made a single video covering the entire Harry Potter franchise. And a lot of you have been asking for individual pitches for each movie, so I'm doing that. That's what's happening. Okay, bye. I'll see you soon. I miss you.